Minimum wage starts today in California. Make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm, subscribe to the channel, and turn on your notifications. Let's run it up, y'all. Now to the higher minimum wage going into effect tomorrow for some fast food workers in California and what it could mean for franchise owners and customers. ABC's Jacqueline Lee joins us live in Los Angeles with the details about that. Good morning, Jacqueline. Hey, Janae, good morning. Advocates argue this is a step in the right direction, given just how expensive it is to live in California. But others argue this is bad for business and the increased cost will pass to the consumer. This morning, some fast food workers in California will soon be making at least $20 an hour, the highest minimum wage within the restaurant industry, set to begin Monday. This is a, a, a start to uh, improve the wages and also improve the working conditions in the industry. This is a $4 increase from the current minimum wage in the Golden State, meaning some workers will make 25% more on their paychecks. Advocates say it's about time, given the extremely high cost of living and inflation. More and more folks are unable to, to raise bigger families or at least, you know, put themselves in a position to retire effectively. The new law impacts more than half a million workers in California and only affects fast food chains with at least 60 locations nationwide. Some Unless you got a Panera. Small business owners worry they won't be able to compete with the wage increase. That's going to impact us by an increase of $470,000 annually across. Let me tell you why this, because see, they try to, they're trying to sell you on an idea that, well, no, 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 no. We're only throwing this uh, in the spaces where the fast food chains has at least 60 locations world nationwide. So that also affects franchise owners, right? So, number one, if you're a franchisee, meaning that you pay a fee, you pay a fee in order to use the name, the products, and have to buy the products and abide by whatever the franchising laws are in that particular uh, franchise that you serve, but yet that franchise also has locations outside of the United States, now that then affects you. Now, of course, you know that some hands probably got greased because we know what's happening with the Panera Bread thing. And the fact that that owner was able to grease some palms, apparently, I don't know, allegedly. But the fact of the matter is Panera somehow was able to get around it because they, that owner was friends with Gavin Newsom. All right. Uh, but also on top of that, what happens is not only does the minimum wage increase affect future wage growth because they're going to continue to increase it, but these organizations are already starting to make the changes and that's when you're going to start to see less people inside of the location more kiosks they've already been developing robots uh, flippy is a fry robot that can do it and operate it without any kind of person so you'll probably only see one or two people entirely inside of these locations but here's the other caveat to it it then puts other business owners that don't have 60 locations or 60 locations nationwide at a disadvantage well First of all, the other one got to pay it at, at pay it at a higher wage, which then is passed over into the consumer, right? But secondly, on top of that, then you're unable to compete for workers. It's already very, very difficult to be able to find workers to do the jobs that we used to have, high school students and people that were there uh, home from college temporarily doing a lot of these jobs. But then what happens? It's a trickle up effect, meaning that it's plenty of people that got raises this year all across the nation, but they felt no difference in their paycheck. Why? Because not only is the cost passed to the consumer, but also everything else goes up around you because the price for something is, is only what some, somebody is willing to pay for it. Meaning that if everybody is competing for housing in one market, then the price is going to continuously go up, similar to what happened during the pandemic, right? What happened during the pandemic? Interest rates dropped. Everybody felt like they got free money. It was almost like getting free money because you had the stimulus checks and you had really, really low interest rates. Everybody was refinancing at the same time. And then what happened? Prices shot up for housing, which we still feel the repercussions for since 2020. Four years later, we're still feeling the same repercussions from the pandemic of the housing market. Why? Because everybody moved out at the same time because everybody was working from home. Nobody felt like they had any room. The commercial real estate industry is practically on the verge of collapsing. Now they're trying to repurpose all of these commercial buildings over into housing, right? Because they're trying to make sure that they can keep up and you can see the health of the economy based off of what's going on in the commercial real estate. On top of that, housing prices shot up. People was buying houses. They was going to open houses and they was almost paying $150,000 above asking 
with no inspection because the market then dictated the fact that the prices was going to shoot up, which then negated the idea that money was cheap. And you still got to pay the property taxes. So everything still flattens out and works out the same similarly as to raising the minimum wage. You never get ahead. You're not going to get ahead. You can't compete. This doesn't solve for the problem of jobs and, and cost of living. It does not. There are so many other factors that it's supposed to be taken into consideration. And I personally think that Gavin Newsom is just absolutely rip, ripping California apart. But we're going to get to that. Those 10 stores. It means that we have to raise prices, which we don't want to do. Two Pizza Hut franchises in California reportedly laid off 1,200 in-house delivery drivers in preparation for the new minimum wage hike. Carrie Harper Howie owns 21 McDonald's and says she does not anticipate closing any locations. The bottom line is everyone is not going to be able to afford even the measured and carefully thought out price changes that we are going to be implementing. So what did all of those fast food, those, those delivery drivers do? Now, instead of them getting a, a certain wage, they're not a gig worker. So now you got to sign up for DoorDash, Grubhub, Uber Eats, and you're going to be delivering based off of the tip based system that you never wanted to be a part of in the first place. All of those people got laid off in anticipation of the increase, and now they're all gig workers. So you're back at square one anyway, and you don't have no health care coverage, and you ain't got no benefits, and you ain't got no tenure, and you're not going to be on, on pepperonis tomorrow. As a necessary part of us responding to the increase. Starbucks saying in a statement they plan to offset the minimum wage increase by changing their pricing as well as other efficiencies in their stores. McDonald's saying they'll provide price recommendations. Now, this law goes into effect tomorrow. There are some exceptions for bakeries and those smaller fast food stores that you find inside airports and grocery stores. And it's funny because. Here, let's let's do this one first. It's funny because. Um. They made an exception for bakeries, which then didn't affect Panera Bread, right? <laughs> Minimum wages for fast food workers are set to hit $20 an hour in California today after a deal no was struck dollar last fall between the unions and the fast food industry. Kate Rogers joins us right now with more on what this means for workers, businesses, and consumers in that state. Good morning, Kate. Hi, Becky. Good morning. The minimum will be among the highest in the nation and the sector's highest as of today, with ripple effects sure to be felt for all parties involved in varying ways. Right now, Glassdoor data show that just over 20 percent of California fast food workers are making $20 an hour, so many more will wind up getting a pay raise. There are half a million workers in the sector in California. I sat down exclusively with Mary Kay Henry, SEIU president, who said this model of organizing by sector instead of by business by business will be replicated in the future, mentioning New York, Washington, and Illinois as potential future targets. I just can't imagine paying a fast food worker $20 an hour. That just sounds insane to me. I can't imagine paying a fast food worker $20 an hour, 20 plus dollars an hour, going up to $25 an hour. Yo, that used to be a good auto industry start like job, like starting off and getting into it and I think I was in the teens when I first when I first started off inside of the steel industry. Twenty dollars an hour to flip burgers and say, hey, man, you want to supersize your order? Do they still supersize? That's a lot of money. Twenty dollars an hour plus. And that's not even a true cost of what it takes in order to hire an employee. See, y'all just looking at the wage compensation. Y'all don't really know the cost of being able to hire an employee. It's a lot. That's a lot of money per person. You know how many burgers you got to sell? You know what the margins are on those burgers in order for you to be profitable? <laughs> Just shut it down. Just go ahead. Give me a kiosk. Give me a kiosk and shut it down. So it's a combination of workers' willingness to strike mm -hmm. and to lobby legislators and to defend the governor in the recall campaign as the fast food workers did here in California. When those conditions are created in other states, we'll be able to make this same progress. So always some, some 
a uh, white woman with a boy haircut that's telling you what it is that you're supposed to do. Ain't y'all tired of fi uh, falling for this old okie doke? Then they tell y'all to remove the, the man from y'all home, Sue. Then they tell y'all to join feminism. Y'all still taking advice from white women that look like white men? Bro, he looks look just like Bill Gates, bro. That ain't nothing but Bill Gates. Bill Sr., Bill Jr. Bro, let me get a picture of Bill Gates. Let's see what's going on up here. Y'all still falling for this? Bill Gates images. Tell me y'all not falling for this. That ain't Bill. That ain't Bill. You telling me that ain't Bill? Y'all still going for this? Y'all falling for the okie doke for people that look like this that keep telling y'all what y'all supposed to do with y'all money and how y'all supposed to organize? Stop it, bro. Stop it, man. I'm not listening to nobody that look like Bill Gates. No more. Are created in other states. will be and able to They got to a tie on. And they got a tie on. And got a tie on telling you how it is that you're supposed to organize and what you're supposed to do with your business. Man, get out of here, bro. This same progress. The hike may also lift wages for low-wage workers who are outside of the restaurant sector. Business owners like Jennifer B. Perez, who runs Growing Roots, a plant design and maintenance company in Long Beach, are closely monitoring the increase in order to remain competitive. It's a ripple effect because I'm not part of that industry, but of course I'm actually looking at all of that as well because like I said, I've always haven't worried about it too much because I was like, oh, I'm always over minimum wage. But since that keeps increasing and increasing and like that's a 25 percent increase from 16 to 20. Her lowest paid worker is at $19 an hour and she has to be wary of further price increases for her customers, she says to Becky. Back over to you. I mean, Kate, that's really the issue here are. I've been calling them unintended consequences. Perhaps in the case of the unions, these are intended consequences. Uh, but it, it, it really creates all kinds of unknown potential changes and how that ripples through not just related industries, but completely unrelated industries. How do you find workers in any of those other industries? Earlier this morning, we were talking about whether that be home health care aides, therapists, mm -hmm. uh, whether that be aides in schools. Why would they go and do any of that type of work when they can just go and flip a burger and go to Taco Bell and do that? Why would they go and work for you and work harder when they can go to Taco Bell? And a lot of those people who are caring for the elderly, I mean, those are some of our most vulnerable populations. And these wages are not going to far outstrip those wages. What what happens in the meantime? It's, it's going to be pretty chaotic. It really will be, Becky. And I went to Seattle and we did a big story on this several years ago, because if you remember, they raised to $15 an hour, which was very high at the time. And different studies over the course of several years after had different findings, right? Some low wage workers had their hours cut, but then it did wind up giving them a nice economic boost. And depending on how you surveyed people, you got different findings there. So it's going to be a very interesting study to see here in California. And as you heard, the SEIU president, they are looking to do this in other states because this was called kind of a backdoor way of unionizing, uh, doing it by sector, right? Not by individual business. So it's going to be. A this is messed up. And I think that it's horrible. Um, this is not capitalism. This is capitalistic, but it's not capitalism.